First of all, let's have a recap. The IRRBB definition, that's our sensitivity to changes in earnings and future value. And as a result, we have two metrics, delta net interest income on the right-hand side and delta economic value of equity, okay? So in other words, how much does our earnings change? Do our earnings change for a change in rates? And how much does the future, expected future value, in other words, our net present value of the banking book change for risk, uh, in result with risk in in response to changes of interest rates okay so that's what we are mainly concerned with as a result of the regulatory guidance so nii when interest rates move we ha are concerned with a 12 month view on net interest income which means i have to make some assumptions about what's going to happen to the balance sheet for the next 11 months if i take this month's balance sheet it's fairly, I should have a fairly reasonable, not fully 100% accurate, but reasonably accurate estimation of what my net interest income is for this month. I've got this month's balance sheet. I know the balance sheet changes every day, but if I'm making an estimation for this month's net interest income, the balance sheet won't change by so much that my net interest income estimation for this month is inaccurate. So I should have a reasonable idea of what my net interest income is for this month. However, I need to work out my net interest income for the whole year. So that means for the next 11 months as well. So I will need to make some assumptions about what the balance sheet is going to look like, customer deposit and customer loan balances for the remaining 11 months of the year, and then work out my estimated NII for the year. That is my baseline NII, and that is the number that I will then stress test for changes in rates. Economic value of equity, is just that it's the net present value of the banking book so I will make I will slot all the customer loans and deposits into their tenor buckets I will simply then net present value them using a discount factor for each term to maturity each tenor point and that's my baseline EVE okay so there is no assumptions to be made for the EVE measure and there's no 12 month metric it's just today I take today's balance sheet I net present value it when I say balance sheet, I do mean the banking book. So in other words, the, the, the banking, well, not, not the whole balance sheet, the banking book. I take the banking book, I net present value it, and that's my baseline EVE. We've now looked at a high level in the, in the three metrics, NII, EVE, and CSRBB, CSO1. NII, of course, is just that, your net interest income. How might we calculate its sensitivity? There's a, a guideline there on slide 46. First of all, we have to, we take today's balance sheet, customer balance sheets, the banking book, and we estimate what NII is expected this month and the remaining 11 months. That requires assumptions to be made on what the cash flows of the balance sheet will be for the remaining 11 months. Critically, it will also require an assumption of what your customer interest rates will be. If you are, you could assume there will be no change to central bank base rates or market rates in the next 12 months. So you don't change the interest rate on floating rate customer assets and liabilities, customer loans and deposits, for the remaining 11 months or you could assume there would be a rate change halfway through the, the period and you raise or lower your customer loan and deposit rates so that's an assumption you have to address you have to also address what the cash flows will be as i've said and once you've got that in place you can work out an estimated nii for the year we then need to apply the shock and then recalculate the nii based on the new interest rates now that will require further assumptions if there is a, cha a shock change in interest rates today of 200 basis points, for example, that won't necessarily apply to every item on your banking book balance sheet, will it? I mean, for a fixed rate loan or a fixed rate deposit, there will be no change. For a floating rate loan or a floating rate deposit, the change in rate may not apply instantly. It may apply in 30 days time, or if it's a notice account, to the notice period of that deposit account. So we have to make some further assumptions about at what point in the next 11 months the shock change impacts the, the actual interest rate that you're going to be charging or paying to the customer. So we then work out what the new NII is after we put that assumption in. That will then give us our sensitivity to the baseline NII and the shock scenario NII. And there is our sensitivity of income to the shock interest rates. Fairly straightforward process. The real complication with this, I wouldn't call it complication. The real issue with this is to is to agree what the assumptions are when you work out your baseline and your shocked scenario NII. EVE is different. It's the present value of the banking book, okay? Some people will say it's the present value of the whole balance sheet, 
but actually it for practical purposes that's not what i would apply for starters i would leave out the equity which this chart does i would take into account the customer balance sheet because that's the practical benefit of an eve measure okay i'm really concerned about what the change of my customer balance sheet is in other words the banking book is the banking book is everything that isn't the trading book and the banking book is what is as what arises as, as a result of my business operations so that will be the customer balance sheet and if you have one your bond portfolio as well which would go on the left hand side and then here are my steps to calculating that sensitivity we put all our cash flows from the current balance sheet into their respective tenor buckets which may require some some assumptions because I'm concerned with behavioral tenor as well and uh, if it's fixed or floating if it's fixed rate fixed tenor it's more clear what tenor bucket it goes into if it's floating rate but it has a behavioral tenor for example a residential mortgage repaying early I'll want some behavioral analysis to go in so I, I put in the cash flow into its into its tenor bucket but I have to emphasize this it's the interest rate repricing tenor bucket that I'm concerned with okay not to the contractual maturity a fixed rate fixed term loan a five year corporate loan a bullet maturity non amortizing corporate loan at a fixed interest rate that has a contractual maturity of five years notional balance goes in the five year bucket if i have a floating rate corporate loan five year contractual maturity but the interest rate is reset every three months at three months libor that notional balance goes in the three month bucket it's the interest rate repricing maturity gap if you look at step 2 on slide 55 it's the interest rate repricing gap that i'm concerned with so i slot the cash flows for assets and liabilities into the relevant bucket and then i discount them i discount assets and liabilities what's the net number between those two that gives me a baseline eve for that tenor bucket i then sum that up that's the present value of the banking book